coming up to the stage now, Melissa Escobedo. Award for social activism from the Center for Political Graphics and has volunteered for numerous causes from children's theater productions to the Obama campaign. So please put your hands together for Melissa. Hello. Uh, the title of my poem is Ed. There's something attractive about food. The way it slithers down my throat, hot or cold, into the acid pool in my bloated stomach, waiting to further digest it. My body's digestive system is made up of hollow organs, yet I choose to fill them daily. Every minute of the day there is an urge to suck up every ounce of fat lying in front of me, besides the lard that is hanging from my own body. An average person's stomach is the size of their own two fists placed next to each other. Now, either I have the hands of a full-grown ape, or I was just blessed with an abnormally large, disproportionate muscular sack. Tell me, why is it that every time I go to a restaurant, I spend 15 minutes arguing with myself over what I should get, and I have to remind myself that you cannot fill these hollow organs without them filling you? without them making every person in the room look at you with pity in their eyes because the poor obese girl is crying over spilled milk. Again and again, I can't forget what is important. I can't forget what it was like being 11 years old and told by the love of my life through a Facebook message. Don't wear short skirts anymore, stupid. You aren't skinny, don't forget that, stupid. And close your legs when you sit down, disgusting. I admit, I have to give him some credit. Without him, I would have never woken up and realized that I was fat. And no one would ever love me because I was too, too much to carry. I had to learn to carry myself. All of the weight on my back, it was hard at first, but it became a challenge I had no choice but to accept. It was either that or continue down my path of 500 calories or less when I've already been told countless times that it takes 1,200 for the heart to fully function. I refused to watch myself disappear. My bones looked nice protruding, but people started asking if I was sick. I wanted to feel beautiful, and even then, at my lowest and smallest, I still felt like my body could never be shown in the same place as those of my beautiful friends and models walking down the street. The public eye had to be kept away. I've been kept away for a long time, and I've been afraid of saying this out loud because I don't want anyone to hear my words and think I agree with what I do. I understand that it is wrong to restrict yourself to the point of sickness. Curled into a tight ball, the pain can't pass off as cramps. You haven't had your period in five months. You're becoming a walking waste. You've damaged every cell in your body. You are weak. That's where the doctors always got it wrong. I will never be weak. I get up each morning and I force myself to look in the mirror. That way I can see what I've been missing. There's beauty in me, and I haven't found it yet, but when I do, I will know that every calorie I counted, every meal I turned down, every scream I muffled in the dressing room will not have made me weak. It will have made me. And I will be beautiful. 